So if there are any questions. Bhavani wants to know, you uh, has asked you to repeat about the pure devotional service. Pure devotional service simply means that you are uh, not getting into the demigod admixture of service. You are not running here and there. You are only engaged in the service of the Supreme, the source of all sources and all uh, subsidiary things you are avoiding. Your purest connection is the Brahma connection which is unlimited types of spiritual energy which also includes Reiki and the KQ force. So demigod worship is not recommended. Krishna has said earlier that the pious people worship the demigods. And then he goes on to explain that that is okay, but the intelligent people do not worship the demigods. Those who have higher understanding, they do not worship the demigods simply because of this, that you come to the point of unmixed devotional service to me rather than mixing it with some demigod worship. And if you are engaged directly only in my service, will you come to me? If you are going to explore other possibilities, then you will reach those other possibilities, not Krishna. So he has explained that those mystics, also the yogis who may have had a desire to uh, enjoy with demigods somewhere, and they may still be connected to the demigods in some sense. And so therefore devotional service is not pure. They will go to the moon planet which is uh, uh, the, you can say the recreationary planet of the demigods or the higher entities. And they will enjoy like you are going for a vacation, having a great holiday there. But after 10,000 years you are back here again. So start all over again. So that's where you will be. So that is the meaning of unalloyed or unmixed devotional service. We do not approach other demigods for anything. We respect them. We recognize their position. And they are there to help us. Uh, for example, when he's, Krishna is mentioning that when you leave your body at certain times of the year, in the time of the fire god and the fire and the light and the sun traveling in the north, all these entities are arranging for you to leave. And they're creating a good passage for you. They're doing that service for Krishna and for you. So they deserve our respect and our gratitude. But they're not to be worshipped the way Krishna is worshipped. You cannot think of Krishna as equal to them. That is an offense. You cannot think the demigods are equivalent to Krishna. So you must understand that Krishna is supreme. He's the source of all sources. And devotional service to him means exclusive. So exclusively serving him, not serving the demigods. There are others who will serve the demigods, that's okay too. But this is not the same destination that they are going to reach. If you take two different paths, you will go to two different destinations. These are not merging. Until you come to the point of this understanding, that ultimately it has to be an exclusive service, an exclusive alignment, you can say, towards Krishna. But it is not that you are opposing the others. It's not uh, because they are part of his management team. Lord Brahma is the supreme manager of the material world under Krishna. So the demigods are also working under Brahma. So they are creating this whole place for you, for you to work out your karma and your destiny. So we respect them greatly. And, but we do not have the same kind of devotional service aspect as we do to Krishna. Krishna also says because people get results very quickly going to the demigods, uh, they are attracted to them because they can get quick benefits. So here the understanding is with Krishna you won't get the, that many quick benefits, but you will get the benefits eventually which are the best for you. And again he is confirming here that all the benefits you get even from those fruitive activities, which is the Karam Khan section of going to the demigod, you are still going to get it. But in a way that is good for you. 
What is the good? The good is your ultimate destination. So Krishna is protecting you from all things that you finally come to him. You are not going to be left a pauper. You don't have to renounce anything. You are going to get all those benefits. You just go through your daily activities with single-minded dedication to Krishna, to serving him and serving his cause directly under the direction of the parampara of the spiritual masters, the school that you are in and you will get that destination eventually. That is Krishna's promise. So he look, looks after his devotees personally. Elsewhere in the Gita he says that for my devotees I carry to them what they lack and I protect what they have. So he is very encouraging in different ways, addressing all these doubts of Arjun and also doubts that we may have. Any other questions? Mickey has asked, in the Gregorian calendar, when are the light or the dark times? Yeah, when the sun is traveling in the northern direction, six months, and then it starts to go in the southern direction, like now in October it is moving in the southern direction. So that would uh, be peaking the longest day, June 22nd I think it is. So that is the peak and after that there is a decline, is there not? There is a southern path that the sun takes, right? So that is uh, after June 22nd, the sun is slowly seen to be moving apparently in the southern hemisphere. So that is the darker six months, so which is running now. Right. But within this darker six months, there are also the bright fortnight of the moon in which anybody passes can go, the mystic goes. But the understanding overall is there is an overall time frame, dark six months, light six months. Then there is the light fortnight of the month, the 14 days when there is moon is visible. And then there is the declining moon and the zero moon, the dark night. So that's Sh Sh Shukla Paksh and Krishna Paksh. So in the dark fortnight again, if somebody goes, if it's the darker six months and a person leaves in the dark fortnight, definitely he's going either to the higher planets for enjoyment or he's going elsewhere. But if he's not uh, in Krishna consciousness or he's not a devotee, he's not a yogi, uh, then they're coming back. So those people will come back. But those who are leaving in the light fortnight by chance, by accident, they are not coming back. Any other questions? So one more. Yes. So having um, Krishna on your side doesn't necessarily mean that you would not suffer. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you are absolved of suffering. This is a dukha life, place of suffering. You are sitting here, but your sufferings are moderated and reduced tremendously because of Things can be really much worse. Yes, sir, I was just watching this serial yesterday. It was the story about Devika, Krishna's mother. So, she suffered so much, but then ultimately she got the benefit of having divine, giving birth to the divine. Yeah. The same way the other mother suffered the separation later, because he left her also. And the, even for the Radha Rani, she left her also, right? Mm. And the separation part was there. Mm. So, it doesn't necessarily mean that we will have a uh, you know, a uh, very happy life or uh, like like Arjuna uh, sir, even the Pandavas, they had a struggling all through their life, but ultimately they were liberated. You know, struggle doesn't necessarily mean unhappy. Okay. Struggle does not translate to unhappiness. Okay. Struggle is struggle. Happiness has nothing to do with struggle unless you make it. So okay. if you are struggling to achieve something, you could be a happy person. Or you could be a miserably unhappy person also. Mm -hmm. It depends how you choose to approach the struggle. And eventually the struggle is an attempt or a striving to achieve certain things. Right, sir. So here in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is explaining what is really important as in terms of your struggle. What is the work that you are doing? Sir, in Bhagavatam or in Gita, sir, 
is there anywhere mentioned that while Pandav were on this one vast, right, sir? I know they were very devoted to Krishna and to pious activities, but it never occurred to their mind that we have been in one vast and all, in spite of being, uh, you know, such a, in spite of being in devotional service. It was a long journey for them, sir. See, the thing is that they were they were looking at this is a situation that we have to go through okay and they were not saying because we are in devotional service to anything or anybody if you look at it in the beginning of bhagavad gita right sir arjun did not know who krishna is yes in reality yes sir so can we say that they were devotees yes they were how because they were in he had an unconditional love for Krishna. That's what my understanding is. Because yes, they were they were like loyal to him, or they were dedicated to him, and they had this uh, loving connection with him. Right, sir. But it's not that they were thinking that you know all the time I have to keep in mind Krishna is God. Yes. Because if you do that, you'll become paralyzed. You cannot yes. actually execute any work. I mean, how will you work with that? Yes. And he's, sitting with you and I mean what is that so there is there, there is a kind of a memory wipe as to who Krishna really is mm -hmm. it's you are thinking that he is my friend but that is the relationship yes you know? other people are thinking oh Krishna is my son yes another one thinking Krishna is my beloved right so and there are others who are very neutral to him, but devoted to him. They don't have any of those moods, but they are fixed, neutrally devoted to him. So, there is friendship, there is a relationship as a parental relationship, or as a, I'm older to Krishna, so I have to look after him. You know? Then there is the loving relationship, the conjugal relationship. So many different ways. Then there is the serving relationship, which is the safest. I am a servant of Krishna. So that is considered to be a safe position. Right. Otherwise the others may be presumptuous. But your natural relationship to him will manifest in time. You will know internally how you are connected to him actually. But the safest is, I am serving Krishna's purpose, I am a servant of Krishna. By doing the healing uh, myself and healing others and focusing on uh, working with that energy, I am serving Krishna, that is your safe position. Internally you may know who you are, it's alright. Got okay. it. Okay. So we'll conclude here, we have concluded text 28 of chapter 8 which is the conclusion of the chapter which is attaining to the divine attaining to Krishna where it is clearly stated that a person who follows the path of devotional service also gets the result of having studied the Vedas performing austerities sacrifices uh, pious activities or even pursuing intellectual philosophical or materially fruitive result oriented goals so you are going to get everything just by this one activity and very often uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami has explained also that it is like watering the roots of a tree the whole tree is satisfied and pleased the leaves and the fruits and the branches everything gets the nourishment so by satisfying Krishna watering the root of the tree is devotional service to Krishna the whole universe is actually satisfied and a person accepting this path at the end of this path leaving his body at the end of this body he eventually reaches the supreme abode hmm? paramam sthanam upeti cha adyam so upeti is peace you get peace finally so you reach that place Okay, so we will conclude here. Next time we will, if there are any questions, we may start with that next time on this. I will put this uh, lecture up on the website uh, soon 
so people have time to study it or go over it again if they need to and go over the previous sequences that are also put up on the website and then we can discuss next week and then start chapter 9 which is the most confidential royal knowledge of bhakti of how you can get there okay secret wisdom okay om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya okay we can log off thank you for attending you've been listening to bhagavad gita for all a practical guide for everyday life a lecture series by nalan narula Explore our website gettingpositivekarmanow.com for more on how to change your karma and destiny.